All right, there we go. Hey guys, welcome back to Table Flipping Board Games. We just played Betrayal at House on the Hill. Or that the house on the hill. Man, now I got screwed up. <laughs> is, the, is the the there or not? It is in the right. title. Yeah. There we go. Oh, hey guys, welcome okay. back to Table Flipping Board. Because I thought it was not. But yes, we just played Betrayal. It was requested by a number of people because we were doing horror um, game month. And that is like a it's a, like an older one, so a lot of people know of it. And it's also like Game Face Killer mentioned in the play session, which if you didn't see the play session, you should definitely check it out on the YouTube VOD. Or if you're you've subscribed to the Twitch channel, you can also check it out on there too. Um, but yeah, he was mentioning that it's a gateway game. A lot of people, it's their first game that kind of gets them into board gaming. And I think it was pretty much like that for... Game Face and myself, if I'm remembering right. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I think it might have been the first one that we played. Like the first... Even before Arkham. I remember Arkham yeah. being one of the first games. The first one we liked. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, so it's like, a, it's like an older one. It's a gateway one. Um, and so I think that's why we had a lot of people um, recommend it and want to see it played, so we did play it. Um, game Face, do you, any facts you want to give about the game before we start our discussion? Uh, nope, I kind of said before, uh, it is it is an old, one of the older games. I think that there are probably some mechanics and things that have come up since then that uh, I think have sort of, and I guess we'll talk about this as a point, is this the idea of, like, are there games that have sort of eclipsed it to where you don't really feel like the game, you know, going back to that game as much anymore. Um, so there are some mechanics, I think, that have been modified or updated since then that are sort of improvements on adventure, horror, exploration, mystery games. Um, but this is one that can be tough uh, depending on the mix of players, how many players you're playing, um, how many rooms you get to explore, before, you know, and then the luck of the die roll for the haunt, which um, I think kind of makes things very very um dicey especially when you have over 100 i don't know how many haunts are there there are i'm checking there are 50 haunts wow yeah um so yeah it's pretty crazy yeah 50 haunts so to me it, it's it becomes very difficult to make it very balanced uh on in all the <laughs> regards for sure mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, yeah, there's yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. Uh, yes, and before we get into the discussion, because I know it's going to get heated, and then I'm going to forget <laughs> to give this because <laughs> reasons. We are on the Misclicks channel. Thank you guys for supporting Misclicks. If you're unaware of what it is, it is a community dedicated to uplifting females in the geek and gaming scene. We have lots of different shows, so you should definitely check them out. We've got one about um, Here's the Storm. We've got a Dungeons & Dragons one, too. We've got ones about cosplay. I think we have a Counter-Strike one that is on its way. And then, of course, we have Table Flipping Board Games, too. So you can always check that out. Uh, we have our schedule on our Twitch channel. But Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube all misclicks. M-I-S-S-C-L-I-K-S. So with that, we'll be talking about females in the game a little bit later. Not that there's too much to say on that one, but let's start with let's start with things we like about the game. How does how does that sound? Sure, sounds good. Okay, uh, I can kick off with something I like right off the bat. Sure, which is the flavor text on all of these like omen item and event cards. Yeah, uh, this is actually occurred to me while we were playing. The rated R Aliens game that we played mm -hmm. is mild in comparison. Yeah, some of these are pretty creepy. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Bloody walls. Like the three people who hung themselves and then are like, you know, or were hanged, I suppose, and then mm -hmm. uh, like descend into dust or like the blood coming out of the walls and over your shoes. And yeah, it was pretty graphic. Yeah. And the nice thing about those cards, too, is that they're fairly simple. Some of them are, get a little complicated, but usually it's pretty easy to read them and get them over with quickly mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. that nothing, your turn never really takes too long. Yeah, right. It's never, really fast. yeah, it's never like a big long story or anything you got to like slog through. But it's yeah, still enough I, to give it a lot of, a lot of just, I don't know, 
uh, what's the word, atmosphere to the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And I think the first half of the game in general is probably, I think, probably the time that I have the most fun playing it. Mm-hmm. Um, because even though you're getting event cards and you might be losing some stats, you also have a chance of gaining stats, getting some cool items. Um, things are kind of mysterious still, so you don't know if it'll end up being something that's a curse to have. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's some, yeah, there's there's really some things that happen in the first half of the game that really do a good job of story-wise and theme-wise build the tension. Right. <clears throat> uh, speaking of tension, I will say that I do like the psychology of this game, um, especially when it comes to the omen cards and the haunt. I think it's a really cool mechanic in that... Um, you never know what's going to be the tipping point. And like the further you get in those like omen cards and still haven't had a haunt happen, the like tenser and tenser and tenser it gets, which I think is really cool. Um, because it's, you know, it's, a, it's like a tense thing, right? If you were to mm-hmm. say you're a bunch of investiga- investigators and you have no idea why you're here at this random house investigating like it would be really tense and so I think that that's a really cool mechanic um I do think that the amount though that an early haunt can like affect it I don't know if there are situations where an early haunt could be really really good for the investigators like maybe if you have to escape from the house sometimes those make it really easy Mm -hmm. when it's an early one because otherwise, right. if you're like really, if you're looking for, if you need to go to certain rooms and you have to look for those rooms and it's a really early haunt, like that is really sucky. So I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know all of the, um, I, I don't know all of the scenarios. And so I don't know how much that affects it, but I, judging by the amount of thought that went into scaling other things, I'm not sure that it was really looked into fully. I don't know. I almost feel like if you're having to search for a room at the end to balance the to balance the having to find a room that doesn't exist in a large pile of rooms. I mean, if there's 42 to start, and I think we had maybe like 30 left or so mm-hmm. when I became the werewolf. Yeah, and we had to I find think, one. We had to find right. two, to find and we knew that one. Ones. Of, well, we had to find one of two, and mm. we knew one of them was in the discard pile already. I, and yeah. the other one was in the basement, and I had no way of getting to the basement. I, I almost felt feel like you should be able to, after that happens, start peeking in rooms. Like, I don't know if this would be a different mechanic or something like that, but, like, revealing connected rooms to you just to get the more of them out on the board. Like, you know, I'm going to spend my turn in this room and reveal all the connected rooms. And then, right. you know, my next turn, if I move into one of them, then I do whatever's on it or something to that effect. But mm-hmm. just... That way, like, because I don't even see, like, if even even if this were an early haunt with six players, I still probably would have had the exact same strategy, and I think I still probably would have been successful because all it takes is for me to bite you once, and then you're spending the rest of the game rolling to not become a werewolf, basically. Right. It totally also brings up a really good point. The lack of basement access is something I've come across repeatedly in playthroughs of this game. The basement is a problem. Yeah. You can't get mm-hmm. into it. You have to like fall into you saw, you have to fall into it, you have to luck into it. And then once you're there, you can't get out of it <laughs> right. until you yeah. get until you find the stairs back up to the landing. I don't understand why that was done. This game is mm-hmm. so freaking complicated already. <laughs> I don't understand. Why that was done? Because I absolutely agree. I've played this game a lot, and the basement makes it, it's unnecessarily difficult. I don't well, know what's, why I'm on top of it. What's weird is that the complications that come up in the game could be easily fixed if they just pick a set of common terms or terms for things. Like, what does it mean to use something versus move yeah. into it? Elevator. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, sure, it's okay to come up with a rule by, by a group of players, but mm-hmm. someone is always going to be upset by that because yeah. the It's traitor, adversarial. After, yeah. after you turn into the traitor, it becomes an adversarial thing. And, like, yeah, yeah that, that definitely, I, I agree. I, th- I think that that's an issue. 
Yeah, voting by demo democracy in a game where it's adversarial is not a good idea. Yeah, right, that was not yeah. a smart play. Like, <laughs> I like when there, it says when there are conflicting, there are games that say when there are conflicting rules, you go with X always. Mm -hmm. Like, right. isn't there, Smash Up has that, right? You always go with the rule yeah, that I is I think you always by, go with the, the negative, right? Right. right. Yeah. Right. So, and that's just much easier. It's much cleaner. Mm -hmm. And, like, I know that we have to, we have to remember that this is, like, an older game. So, like, take that, remember that it's an older game. So, like, there's a lot of things that other people have improved upon mm -hmm. just by, like, playing from this game. Yeah. When making other games. But still, we're probably going to have to talk about the really bad things of this game, like scaling. <laughs> scaling is horrible. But wait, let's go through the other things that we like too. Okay. <laughs> um, I also really like that there are an even number of female and male characters. I think that that's really cool and that um, they're opposite sides. Yeah, there are. So you basically can pick a color and then you have a different choice and they're a little bit different. Like mm -hmm. there's like the child women, the like kind of middle-aged women and then like the the early 20s women and then there's the child male the like middle aged male and then like the older men i didn't even right. notice that but that's awesome yeah yeah so that's really cool and i i think it would have been cool if they would have had something other than just stats so like if each one had some sort of special ability like yeah. A, yeah yeah a trait of some sort yeah the other thing that I wish that they had kind of updated the art, it's the original art, and I'm sure it's kind of nostalgic for some people, but the re-release of the game, which if you look at the tabletop, uh, is the new release. The cover was upgraded uh, and looks really cool mm -hmm. um, compared to the old cover. Uh, I kind of wish that they had updated some of the character uh, a little bit, character sketches, but mm -hmm. I could see keeping it for nostalgia flavor. Um but yeah, I wish that there had been a little bit more difference in the characters other than just straight stats. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, and the, one thing I do like, uh, I feel like the skill checks are not overly hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes Arkham skill checks can be really hard. I like the dice are different than six-sided dice. Uh, it seems to make, for some reason, it seems... Uh, easier to succeed, even though I don't know why where that comes from. It may just be like a personal preference or a personal. No, I thing. think I, I think that it definitely makes a difference because there's there's only what it's a zero, one, or two on here, mm -hmm. and there's two of each as far as I can tell. Yeah, yeah, there's two of each. So I think they can because there's not so much um, granularity with the numbers. You can. You can have a small range, like the the knowledge check or the sanity check or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. You can have you can have smaller numbers, and it's just more it's just kind of more chunky, right? right? Yeah. So, yeah, no, I totally agree. I felt like the skill checks in this were really good. Mm -hmm. um, I do like the way the that. Oh, I was just going to say the way that you do, the way that they do the stats as well. I also really like yeah. that you can go up and down, and that um, it just made it feel very dynamic, and like your character had a lot of kind of a lot of personality to them. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the only thing that I thought was kind of strange is that there's three on here that control dice rolls and one that controls dice rolls and like movement. Oh, right. It just kind of, uh, it just kind of weird because that's like the odd one out. So I actually mm -hmm. picked my character because I didn't really care about movement all that much. Yeah. It, it's kind of strange. And, and it's weird too, that your hit points are also your die roll, your skill Point. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you end up that is to make, weird. You end up having to make some weird decisions, like, oh, I'm going to take my speed all the way down to nothing, yeah, uh, just to keep my ability to combat <laughs> up. Which, yeah, and it's it, it yeah. kind of it kind of doesn't make sense. I mean, well, actually, on one level, it makes sense because, like, right. you know, you're as you get beaten down more, you're weaker and like you're yeah. able to do less, but. Right. That's just not the way games work, right? It's also like, not Mario the way life works. Yeah. <laughs> really, when you think about it. Like, Wait, what do you mean? I'm going to choose where I'm injured. So I'm going to choose to injure my legs so that I have less speed so that I can still <laughs> oh, combat right. things. Like, that yeah. doesn't make sense. They choose where to injure you, not mm -hmm. the other way around. So yeah, the combat actually makes no sense. 
yeah but it's your it stats is, it is it is a little weird like I, I appreciate that they wanted to simplify the game though yeah, yeah but at this point just have a hit point track it's one <laughs> that's more it's the bottom that's that's I true can't yeah have a hit point track. <laughs> yeah 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 uh, I guess one of the things that they wanted to do maybe was have a difference between uh, physical damage and mental damage, which mm -hmm. then again, you could just have a mental track. Sanity, and, yeah. Hello, yeah. Arkham. Mm -hmm. yeah. Difficult. <laughs> I do really love, one thing I wanted to say, I, I keep forgetting to mention this, I do love the tile drawing for the rooms. Yes. Yeah, and that you construct I kept a different mansion every time. That um, is a really cool aspect of it. Yeah. It makes it more scenario-based along with the scenarios. Right. Yeah. And it's, it is a lot of fun to do, which, again, is my favorite part of the first half of the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, is, is putting your house together. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not so much what you want to be doing in the second half, but it is really cool. <laughs> yeah. <to do. laughs> yeah, it is not any fun at all. To be, <laughs> you want your house to, to have house. been built. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, to I totally agree. I actually... That's my favorite part of the game, is yeah. the, the whole thing of building the house exploring the house while simultaneously wondering like at, at what point are all of us is it going to break and somebody is going to betray us like that is the best part of this game mm -hmm. in my opinion i almost wonder what a version of this game would be like that none of us actually had to play the betrayer and the betrayer was played by an app kind there of are, like there um, are some oh then an app that would be cool. yeah like like uh xcom yeah, so would. wouldn't mm -hmm. that be, would, did you think that'd be neat? Like if you could encounter NPCs in the house or something like that, you know, like yeah. the butler and the, you know, I don't know, the weird magister and just you know, a jester, like all sorts of weird stuff, right? Yeah, and they're but... all just kind of wandering around the house and then you like, you know, one of them turns into the betrayer and then. It's cool, but at the same time, I think it takes away a lot from the feel of the game, right? Like the feel is we're all together, until we get to the to the uh, haunt and mm -hmm. then who knows and like that's the cool part is that you're exploring you're building out the house but there's like this overhanging like scary am i gonna become the betrayer is someone else gonna mm -hmm. become the betrayer i think yeah. that that's a really cool aspect of the game that i wouldn't want to get rid of it's just the oh scaling. yeah it would, it would be a different game i wouldn't i wouldn't want to get rid yeah. of it either like i like this game as it is okay but i just kind of wondering what a game like that mm -hmm. if i would like a game like that more because personally yeah i hate being the betrayer yeah, I just don't like it at all. Like, not even a little bit. Yeah. So and we, we may Dave end up talking about this again when we play another any uh, of a, of the other one uh, v four games. But I'm not a big fan of one v four games or one v however many, mm -hmm. um, because yeah. I feel like the brain power of three people or two people is always going to be better than the brain power of one person by themselves. To be, that's that is true when you have to make like the decisions. But mm -hmm. if so. If it's a game like this or Battlestar, that that does suck when you're like by yourself. But right. that's kind of, I guess, why they mitigate and make the one person stronger, right? right. Like the, right. the the werewolf was stronger, just like in when you play Mario Party, right? Like if it's a the one v three, then the one person is generally really strong. But the there are games like the one we're gonna play next week, which is Mansions, where your job is not to win. Your job is to like help carry along the story and be like the storyteller, yeah. a dungeon and master. The dungeon yeah. master. I like and I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. not so bad. Mm -hmm. But when it's a you only win if mm -hmm. sort of thing, like you win if everyone else loses. Yeah, that's not so fun. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But some and people like probably some people probably really like that. Like some people I bet really want to be the betrayer. Yeah, knowing <laughs> we need knowing to find people. one of those people. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, play but with them. They wouldn't be the betrayer, and then they'd be like, "Bite me! I want to be a werewolf too." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, as a, a related question, I wrote down because I really wanted to ask you guys. So, mm -hmm. in because I'm glad you brought up the the battle star element with betrayer. Um, although there there is a chance that you could be a sleeper agent and not know. This is a sleeper agent game, right? Because you don't know at the beginning yeah. of the game who the betrayer right. is going to be. Um, I think one thing that might make the game interesting too is what if one person knew at the beginning of the game uh, in so some scenarios they that they were going to be the betrayer. Secretly, you could, if you determine that sort of the way you do with Battlestar, 
um, hmm. how different the game might be. It would be a lot different because yeah. you're all still on the same side. Like there would be a whole other level of intrigue at the beginning where you right, wouldn't right. be willing to share items or anything like that. Yeah, Whereas exactly. Before you can share items, it would be so different. But yeah. don't you think because someone is could be a traitor that you're maybe more hesitant to share items anyway? Um, um, not really because it's like an equal chance of everybody. Like yeah, you could be like the betrayer. You so really, yeah. you yeah. could just as easily become the betrayer, but you're playing like you're not playing to be the betrayer earlier on, you know, like, I don't know. I think it would change the intrigue of it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, sometimes I find that the fact that you don't know the betrayer adds one more very like crazy variable to it. Um, in the sense that you could have one person who's getting really built up, uh, and then all of a sudden that person just happens to get the betrayer. Right. And you're Um, like, well, now we're screwed. yeah, Yeah. It, so it could be, that to me, it, yeah, I, ne- I don't necessarily hate the idea of being friends at the beginning either, mm-hmm. but I don't like the idea that the betrayer is so random that sometimes it's the person you really least want to be the betrayer. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't like. I I guess I really like it because it's innocent at the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. the idea that. If somebody knows and they're acting like they're not and then we reach the haunt and then they reveal, oh, I've been a betrayer the whole time, then it's kind of like you feel bet- – you, you actually feel, <laughs> you feel betrayed. betrayed. You know, yeah. like you actually feel betrayed. They, yeah, were, they were being They were being, you know, uh, sneaky or whatever. Duplicitous, yeah. Yeah, duplicitous. They were lying to you. It, it, exactly. But like where this is, everyone is innocent. And they yeah. can't help it that they're the betrayer and they, they're given – like I'm not – I'm not mad at Ogre, obviously. Like, it was not, it, it just happened. And that's what the cool thing is that, about the haunt is that you mm-hmm. never know when it's going to happen. It's, very it's random. just that the game is not good when it comes to scaling and like making sure that everything is fair no matter what, like, no matter the number right. playing, no matter when the haunt is. Like, it's just, there are so many contingencies that it's impossible to make this game fair. And like, that is tough to want to play it again. Mm-hmm. It, well, yeah, and because there, all of those variables are right. completely impossible to control. And yeah. they were talking about, they were talking about errata in the, in the chat, and yes, there's a, there's a huge errata in this, but my issue with, with an errata is like, it's good, it's good to have one as long as you hit a certain point and you know the game, and you're like, I don't need to keep consulting this, but when you every time play the game, end up having to look something up that's a problem it's a problem you shouldn't have to look it up every time and we have had to every time yeah that's that's a problem yeah because you guys have played this game a lot right you played this game a lot yeah yeah i think this is my second time playing it and Uh yeah it's i can definitely see how that would be an issue yeah and i think one of the things that it's very strange to me that it, that it doesn't scale because at first when we were drawing the wolf tokens, it mm-hmm. said draw one per player. And I was thinking, okay, that's going to be the scaling thing. If there were more players, we'd draw less tokens. Yeah. But those <laughs> right. tokens were just to represent no. who was I'll tell you it. that. Yeah. yeah no, uh, the, the, the actual scaling. So there was one small piece of scaling, which was mm-hmm. for each hero you move, you can add a point to an ability. Oh, when right. You become a werewolf. But, but those are going to go up anyway. They're going to go up to, anyway. You get two per turn. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like that doesn't even that I, I feel like that's still balanced in the werewolf's right. favor. Your yeah. stats so. should not like your stats should not matter to us. What should matter mm-hmm. to us is exploring, getting the revolver and the silver bullets together and then right. one shot kills you. One shot no matter what your stats are. So your stats shouldn't matter to us. It should be us mm-hmm. trying to move around, get everything, get them together and then one final battle with you. Yeah. Right. So, which, which like the, the stats do don't say that. All. So the scale, like the scaling, <laughs> isn't isn't relevant. Well, then. I mean, if I couldn't if I couldn't bite you, then it's relevant. Like if if my might was so low that I was unable to ever roll high enough to bite anyone. But it goes mm-hmm. up every turn. So all you That's do the is thing. you it like goes up every turn. You just chill out and then like for a couple of turns and then start yeah. biting people. And the crazy and you have thing. the the dog. 
Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, the dog should have probably been taken out if you have like fewer than three players. Yeah, I was waiting. Uh, yes. The one, th- the one thing that's interesting too is because your stats go up two times or two spaces, mm-hmm. I, we would have to do a net damage or a profit of two damage to you every time we were playing, uh, every time it was our turn to stay even with you, and right. even more than that, even more than two to to start whittling you down. Yeah. And let's. Win- that's it's, crazy. It's ridiculous that we have to stop in every room still that has an event or an omen or any sort of draw card, and you mm-hmm. do not. Wait. Yeah, we do. No, he still, he still can, has to stop. You have to stop, but you don't have to do them, I, right? I so can just ignore taking, it. Yeah, but right. we're taking damage from random things. You don't mm-hmm. have to take damage from random things, which I guess is the, the 1v3 or whatever aspect. But, yeah. like, how does that scale versus two or four yeah. people? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because not ch- choosing to do it or not do it, there's no scaling there. There's no way to scale that. Yeah. We would have gone through the room stack so much faster with a couple of other Of players. course we would have. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, you would have drawn a, a, a whole other tile for every yeah. other player. Yes, so, of course we would have. Yeah. And we would have had way more people to help, like, keep knocking you down in damage. We would have had mm-hmm. more people probably with items. We would have been able to, um, like, find ways out of the basement faster, which, ho- well, hopefully the basement <laughs> is stupid. Yeah. It's just, there's no, the fact that there was absolutely no scaling when it came to number of enemies, like, really amount of, like, hit points you have or, like, your stats because your mm-hmm. stats technically didn't matter. We had we had to kill you with the silver bullets. Right. And, oh, like, yeah. I don't think we actually like, mentioned only, this. Yeah, that only increases with the number of players we have, be, like, the amount of skill checks that we can do, too. <laughs> like, it's, there's, it's ridiculous that there was yeah. no thought in this at all. No, I, I agree. Um, but I, I don't think we actually mentioned this explicitly. Um, the werewolf is invulnerable. So I actually cannot be killed. Right. No, it tells uh, until... us that we have to kill right. you with Oh, oh, did you got, oh, right. I forgot you guys talked about that on the, the right. secret mode. Okay, yeah. But if, but if we had wounded you, would you have taken damage? That's the one yeah. question I was wondering. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, take okay. Da- I take damage. I just can't be okay. killed. Right. So, That's what I figured was the rule, yeah. was that we couldn't take that last little bit of damage off of you. Right. So, yeah, I can never actually go to the skull square. I can only go to the one above it. Okay. okay. So, yep, it was very strong. And... I can I can see why it, it's it's a shame. I mean, I can see it's definitely an issue. The scaling is definitely an issue. Mm-hmm. Um, but the game, how, how many haunts were there? Game phase, you say fifty, right? That is a huge number of different games to balance. Like <laughs> yeah. they yeah. they essentially have to balance fifty different games in all the different possible combinations of ways that you can play them. Early haunt, late haunt, you know, variety of players like. I can see why certain scenarios like this one are not balanced. It's just they would have had to do so much playtesting and so much, you know. Um, yeah. So, like, have so many different specific rules. Like, that card would have been, like, four cards in order to say all the different contingencies that you could come up with. So, on one hand, I can see that... I can see why they didn't do it. They were just like, you know what? This is the interesting... This is what's going to happen. It's going to be interesting. You can't just um, not. But no, but on the other on the other game. side, no, on the other side, <laughs> they I, it was. That's the thing. Like, is it worth having so many different haunts if some number of them are unbalanced? Yeah. Like, no. would it, would it have been better just to cut down the number of haunts? But then that's kind of like their hook, right? That's the right. that's the interesting thing that that there is about the game. So play test your game. <laughs> well, okay, it's hard. Well, that, no, that's you. That this? is your job play about this? different numbers what? every What's up? single scenario that's what you need to do yeah. how about this instead how about having a certain number of scenarios that are for yes. uh smaller Us. groups of people and, and then it's you yeah. know we, like if that we got the werewolf it would say it. this can't be your haunt do it choose a different right, right. now that's what i was gonna say that's a good idea limit, that's a really good idea further the number of players who can play yeah because the three to uh, six is a fairly large amount three yeah. to four or five to six right mm. So either do that or have scenarios that are better for a certain number of of care of, of people playing. I think yeah. would be really good too. But one of one of those things, if you are not going to figure out how to scale the scenarios perfectly to balance it out for that number, 
like that wide of a range of players, then you need to somehow limit right. the peak. Right. Because this this is like <laughs> nearly not playing ever again level for me. That was so Im- impossible from the get go. Like that is so frustrating for me to come in and know like think if I were an actual new player mm. and I came in and I was like, well, that was ridiculous. I'm never yeah. going to play that game again. Like you, it's, mm-hmm. and you, you know, know, it's not always that way, game. but like, it's yeah. just, yeah, yeah. But, but a new player would not know that. Right. 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 Exactly. Well, I think, I think we might be seeing some of the rough edges that are why other games that we find to be in, like extremely good and replayable why those games are the way that they are to us. That's like, right. you know, those games, they've been polished like crazy and they have found all of the, the bugs, basically. It's funny yeah. to talk about bugs in a, you know, in a, a physical game, but they found <laughs> all of those things and they've been like, this is where we're going to think this through. We're either going to change or simplify our rules or clarify what actually needs to happen in, in order to make this function. Like, right. you know, you know, Arkham, we we played Arkham wrong for a long time. Yeah. And we also had to consult lots and lots of different errata on Arkham. But and we have a pretty good handle on it right now, but I'm not convinced we actually know all the rules. But we find that it's fun. And I think that there's a similar level of like strange interactions of rules in Arkham. But I will say on the whole, like on the base yeah. level, sorry, on, on the base no, level, no, like the the game is so well um it's so self-consistent that you mm-hmm. know what to expect. And when you play the game, you're going to have an approximate experience of the times that you've played before. This, right. I, think, I think the frustration with this might be coming that we know that this can be an awesome game, but in certain scenarios that occur more frequently than we'd like, it ends just in a landslide. Yeah, it, one crashes. Or the other. it crashes. Right, it, it crashes. The game crashes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, sorry, Gilly, what were you going to say? Uh... I, I will say that I feel like with Arkham, here, here's, okay, I talked about errata, right? Number of mm-hmm. errata to the game. Like, we read a ton of errata, but, like, we still got to a point where we were like, we have a handle on this game. Don't you think so, Gabe? Mm-hmm. It took us a year. <laughs> it took okay. us a year, Fair probably, enough, yeah. of playing the game. How old is this game that we just played? 2005, uh, four, right? Yeah, four. So 11 years. We just consulted the errata today <laughs> when playing it. That is different. That's true. That is different. <laughs> you, can't, you can't have to read. I mean, I understand it's because they have so many scenarios. And mm-hmm. that, and actually, like, Twilight brought up a really good point. It said, think if you had already gotten the revolver and had the room in the mansion, then it's a guarantee for the humans. The randomness is so big that balance is impossible to an extent. I mean... I think that if we if we had gotten the revolver and had the room in the mansion, I don't I still don't know with only two humans if we would have we had to get them together. Mm-hmm. And it would have depended on go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say we had to actually find two different rooms, the room with the revolver and the right. room to make the silver bullets. Yeah, the mm-hmm. room with the revolver was a 1 in 3, one out of the 3. But like, yes, if we had both of the rooms up, if you had both the rooms up, it would have been very difficult for me. I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't well, know about no, very because... difficult because you bit him and like two turns later, he turned into a werewolf, dropped the revolver, and then all of a sudden I have two werewolves on me trying to get up to the revolver. Even if I had found the room and made the bullets, I still would have had to run to the revolver. I don't think that... Mm-hmm. I think it would have been, yes, way more helpful, but like the fact that... The fact that there is like impossible level to it i don't know it just it's it's too it's way too wide of a of a range yeah I don't know. it is a very I, very broad yeah it's way too broad and so then i said we'll take the scenario out and he was like well all the that randomness is going to occur in every scenario and you can't move them all maybe that's my problem with the game <laughs> it's just the scenarios are mm. too impossible to balance and you play it knowing that eh, probably not going to be fair for one of the sides involved and you just play for But the... you get to explore a haunted house. I don't know, yeah. dude. That's my favorite part. Is this is <laughs> Game Face Killer? Is this why you never want to play this game? Well, yeah, I mean, I do think it causes a little bit of frustration um, <laughs> too often. Uh, <laughs> and then part of it is there's this really interesting concept that I heard them talking about on a podcast 
uh, called the idea of the eclipsing games, right? Where a newer game comes out, and we've kind of been talking about this already. That they've there have been mm-hmm. people who kind of been influenced by this and uh, really liked it, but wanted to kind of improve on it. So there's, it's basically like this idea that you get what you want from this game in other games, and they're less frustrating. Um, and I, I suppose I would always choose to play something that's fully cooperative versus mm-hmm. the game uh, when you're talking like Elder Sign, like we played last week, and yeah. uh, or Arkham uh, at Eldritch Horror. I, lo- I like all those games a lot. And to me, I feel like I get I get that. Although Mansions has a lot of Mansions, basically, I think was directly. Uh, like as a direct uh, ancestor or progeny or whatever Mm -hmm. of, of this game. Um, Because as you'll see next week, it has exploration. It has mystery investigation. Players know things. They don't know other things. Um, But there is a betrayer or a a Mm -hmm. kind of a keeper or whatever from the beginning that is kind of like the puppet master. Um, So to me, I feel like it's, it's almost like, I wonder if part of it is I, I don't like the level of frustration that can happen. And then, probably 75 that's like 25 percent and then 75 percent of it is i can get better experiences out of other games yeah right yeah it's i didn't even think about that but i'm really glad we are playing mansions next week because it is a lot like this but it's not i don't know it's it doesn't have like where the the rooms, like the rooms are already set, but it does, it is scenario based. So mm-hmm. it's different for every scenario, which is cool. And they can always release expansions. Like that's the really amazing thing about scenario based games is you can always release expansions. And then it doesn't have the idea of the omens into the haunt, right. but it still does have clues and puzzles. Mm-hmm. Like the, the puzzles you have to solve is such a cool idea I've never seen in a game oh, before. I can't yeah. wait for you guys to see that because that that's is one of the really coolest, cool. coolest mechanics for a game I've ever yeah. seen. So, and, I, really, and I've never seen that since. It's strange. It's really weird too because out of all of the Arkham-based um, games, so we have Arkham, El- Elder Sign, Eldritch Horror, and then Mansions of Madness, it feels like Mansions is like the one nobody talks about. Maybe it's because it's another. It's one of those 1v3. Yeah, I don't really mm-hmm. understand, but you know, we've played with family members who say, ah, I don't really like that game. I don't want to play it again. It's like, I don't understand you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how could you not? I can understand how you could be like, uh, it's not as much fun, but some people have some really strong negative reactions to it. And I, hmm. I guess I don't get it, but maybe I'm very much more of a story person. Yeah, it maybe really is it. like a horror story that you play through. I, I could so, understand once you know all of the scenarios... I, right. I feel like we're like judging managing that, but I know, you know we're, we're kind of we're kind of went like <laughs> yeah. off on a tangent here. I was gonna ask is uh is mansions so were, were you guys saying that mansions is like a, a spiritual successor to this game? Yeah, is that, yeah, okay, yeah, that's fair. But but it with this this game only kind of toes on being in the edge of like the Cthulhu mythos and that sort of thing. Right, right? it's a right. horror game, but it's not quite in that universe. Right, this is not this is a different. It's not a fantasy flight game. It's Wizards of the Coast. Oh, right. okay. It, right. And that right. was actually a pickup after the fact that it was made. Yeah, I see. Although I would I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't seen every is. single scenario, but I I wouldn't hmm. be surprised if there are some. HP Lovecraft influence scenarios in this one. I can't, I can't imagine there aren't because right. it's just like everything's there's honestly, uh, to, yeah, and there's so many of them. And to me, just being in this house and like the descriptions is, on all the cards and everything just falls right into that same kind of genre for me. There is so. one, isn't there? The one with the tentacles. Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah, if you look over here at all the icons, yeah, there's got to be something, right? Oh, wait, yeah, hold on. There's, there's um, the one with the tentacles. Or- Ouroboros. Isn't that a... Uh, I think that's a uh, some kind of something else. cultish. It's, that's the, the snake serpent. that eats itself. Yeah. yeah. Oh Mommy. yeah, yeah, that's right. Spire Let's see. Witch. I mean, we have this like tentacly thing here. Yeah. No, there's absolutely monster. there's one that literally is like tentacles moving through all of the rooms. So that's oh, crazy. I mean that is okay. Cthulhu. That's pretty. That's yeah. That's definitely Lovecraftian. Okay. So, all right. So. 
Have we talked about <laughs> everything related to this? We're just all excited about mansions next week now after playing this horrifying <laughs> rendition of Betrayal at the House on the Hill. I mean, I do have to give <laughs> it some serious love because it really is one of the first board games that really got me into board gaming. That and that... What is that weird board game you got me for Christmas one year when I was a kid that, like, you set up, it's like a mansion, and there's, like, actual physical traps. It was, like, mouse trap, but a mansion edition. Do you remember that? Man, I don't remember that. I'm not going to remember that either. Uh, yeah. Mansion board game. Well, one thing I will say, if you don't mind while you're looking that up. Yeah, go ahead. Um, if you... If you are really looking for a game to either get yourself into this type of kind of adventure horror type board gaming, you've never played it before, this is a pretty good start. Although, just make sure that you keep that frame of mind that if if they're if it, if you start to get frustrated, don't don't necessarily look everything up online. Just decide together mm -hmm. as a team what you think the rules should be, and make sure no matter what, play with five or six people. Please <laughs> play with five or six. People. Yes. Yeah. It is so definitely. much more fun, and then there's this team element. Like it would have been really cool if Ogre, and, you know, if we'd been playing with more people. If you mm -hmm. know, there had been a werewolf team and a and a last remaining humans trying to find the revolver. Uh, it adds a lot yeah. more to it. Yeah, I could definitely see. I've seen that playing out differently and being really cool. Yeah. The game was thirteen dead end drive. I do kind of remember that oh, now. Oh, I remember. I think I remember we've talked about this before, actually. <laughs> yeah. So it was like that, and, and then Betrayal. I remember playing Betrayal with Game Face Killer and my cousin, or our cousins that we would also play D&D &D with sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's like some of, yeah, the earliest board gaming, other than like Magic or the Pokemon cards, but... Yeah, uh, everyone's remembering 13 Dead End Drive. Yeah. Uh, I remember that, so Game Face Killer got it for me for Christmas, and then we set it up, and we played it, and he won, and I cried, because I was like, am I playing a new game, and I lost <laughs> it. And I still do that. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's yeah. it's it's fun to, you know, how, how much games have changed since even this game, I mean... Yeah. I was thinking 2004, that seems so recent compared to, you know, my entire life. But just how games have changed since we've played this game. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is crazy how different, how much is out there, how many options you have. Um, and just the mechanics that are just completely evolved since that point. For the better, but yes, I do. I do love playing this, knowing all of the Arkham games and such, and being able to see, you know, the references that were made to it. That's pretty cool. So thank you for being a uh, muse for my favorite game in game universe. I will give you that betrayal at the house on the hill. <laughs> Yeah, and it's definitely a lot of fun if you get if you're trying to get someone into board gaming in this kind of board game. This is a great game, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Well, any other thoughts? I don't think it so. It was fun. I'm looking forward to next week. I'm really looking forward. I'm going to be the DM. Oh, you are? Are we going to die in the freezer again? I'm super pumped. <laughs> no. I am excited. I am excited. Yeah, yeah that'll be cool. If you guys are um, unfamiliar with the fact that we used to do the show before it was on Misclicks, we have done a Mansions of Madness before, so it will be our first repeat, but it's a scenario game, and it's totally worth the repeat. So if you want to see it, it is on um, my YouTube channel, which is Gillyweed SC2. if you want to see the old mansion one to prepare and see if I can win two for two, or if my guests... We'll be able to bring it back. And Deb's going to be on next week, too. Sweet. Yes. That'll be exciting. Hopefully she'll be okay with being against being versus me. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Well, it'll be nice to have teammates, at least, so she's not on yeah. her own. Yeah. And it's not... It's like I said before, it's really awesome because I'm not really, I root for you guys. Like yeah. I, I just root for the story to be really, really cool and for the story for you guys to be cool. So if, if that means you win, then that's fine. If that means I win, then that's fine too. So, or, yeah, with that epic win you had last time, <laughs> it, would, yeah. it would be Don't nice. go in the freezer. Don't go in the yeah. freezer. Oh, go into the freezer. Dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but actually don't go in the freezer. <laughs> for reals though. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be a lot more careful about that this time. Exactly.
All right, Gilly, you want to finish us off here with a uh, table flip? Sure, before we go, don't forget to follow us. Uh, Ogre Yonder, Game Face Killa, Gillyweed SC2. We'll be back next week with Manage the Madness. And don't forget to follow Miss Clicks too. Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, all at Miss Clicks. M I S S C L I K S. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Sorry for the salt. And once again, we say goodbye to Betrayal. Thank nice. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Never again!